lights and cameras and mirrors. Oh, hello, it's your boy, Autor Deluxe. I don't know what to do with the background, so this is what we're getting today. Uh, work smarter, not harder, Is that does that apply here? And yes, I, I can read, I've read up to two books. Today, we're gonna talk about John Cassavetti's Husbands. This is a movie I both simultaneously love and hate, and that's a new one for me. I have a lot of movies that I love to hate. For instance, Nomadland, Tenet, uh, Moonlight is another one, and lots of movies that I hate myself for loving. Uh, the Spectacular Now. I love you. Don't love me. Yes, I do. Uh, Spun. <laughs> the Beach Bum. One day I will swallow up the world. <laughs> but John Cassavetti's 1970 movie Husbands is a movie I both love and hate. So this whole thing kind of started in 2016. I remember getting my tax return and the uh, Criterion sale hit right at that time. And I bought the Cassavetti's box set, not really knowing a lot. I knew I loved Chinese Bookie. I love and will always love Chinese Bookie. That one clicked with me immediately but I didn't really know anything else. And initially, I it took me about three years to even finish this box set, uh, mainly because at the time I was a crippling alcoholic and I got sucked into shitty uh, YouTube playlists more than movies at the time. But initially, I was not a John Cassavetes fan at all, aside from Chinese Bookie. Cassavetti's movies have very disjointed stories and very long run times, and on a first view as an audience member, you're spending much of the runtime just wondering where we're going with this, what's going on, what what is this movie gonna be? But despite all that, there's always been something that brings me back to these films, even the ones I truly dislike. Cassavetti's characters are always dealing with like raw, unfettered emotion, and they're always going through something in life. They're at a very low point, or they're at a transition in life, and they're going through that. His movies are very messy. They capture the way that life is messy. The way he uses a handheld camera is very unique to him. It's very much his style. I love his stable of actors that he chooses to work with. Jenna Rollins, Peter Falk, Ben Gazzara, uh, Timothy Carey, Seymour Castle. But again, these, these run times can lag and these character arcs don't always like pan out. There's never really like a Hollywood resolution to anything. That's why I think it's best to withhold any kind of hot take you might have on a Cassavetes movie until you've seen it at least twice. Nowhere is this more evident than when you watch Husbands for the first time. The first time I watched Husbands, I didn't like it and I still don't like it but I also fucking love it. Cassavetes is interested in two things. He's interested in love and he's interested in truth. And in this movie, he does that by way of these guys, these three friends. They go on kind of a lost weekend after one of their friends within the friend group passes away unexpectedly and relatively young. I think these guys are all pushing 40. Let's start with what I don't like about Husbands. On a first watch, you're really just trying to figure out what the fuck this movie is. We have these three adult man children running around aimlessly, obnoxiously, and shit-faced. Uh, the movie's way too fucking long. This movie is almost two and a half hours long. There's a bar scene towards the beginning that brings the movie to a screeching halt and overstays its welcome by at least 15 minutes. Also, there are some hotel bedroom scenes toward the end that are a bit gratuitous. We watch Peter Falk make out with a woman for like three minutes straight, zoomed in, close. It's weird. And there are a couple very vicious moments in this movie. Peter Falk's character gets very angry at the woman he's making out with because she decides to use too much tongue for his taste. So uh, he ends up screaming at her and I think he slaps her. And Ben Gazzara's character is very vicious towards his wife. He does slap the shit out of his wife. Those are my main gripes. A couple uncomfortable moments, uh, two and a half hour runtime that feels like about six hours. Now on to what I do like. This friendship on screen is so overflowing with love and it's palpable. It's just so much fun to watch. And in the Blu-ray extras on the Criterion, you have uh, these three guys, uh, Gazera, Falk, and Cassavetes himself on the Dick Cavett show. And it's like an extension of this movie. They're just goofing around, 
clearly fucking drunk and making each other laugh and making Dick Cavett very uncomfortable. <laughs> now you guys wouldn't pick. I've always been great fans of the three of you. I really have, and I hope that you. I wish you wouldn't have said that. Tell who you are so I know, because I it's hard that's, to keep the names. That's John Cassavetes. That's, that's no, this that's is Harry Cassavetes. Gardino. <laughs> It feels to me as if we've done 45 now, but we will be right back after this message from uh, someone who doesn't. Uh, that's the jockey short people. There's just so much care in making this friendship shine on screen, this friendship and the dynamic between these three guys shine. There are plenty of fucking bad indie movies where people cast their friends. Cassavetes just happen to have veteran pro actors at the top of their game as his best friends, and we get to watch that. We, we, the audience, are lucky enough to get to experience that. I read a criticism on this movie that said that any of the guys could have played any of the other guys, like Cassavetes could have been, he is Gus, he could have been Harry, uh, Peter Folk could have been Gus, he's Archie, I forget their names. But anyway, just either of these guys could have played either of the other guys. I don't think that's true. I think they have very defined personalities, very defined characters in this film. On to another thing I really like, which is the editing. I love at the very beginning of this film, we have uh, Folk and Cassavetes in the background just kind of fucking off and goofing off and having a loud conversation. And we keep cutting to Gazera, who is shooting very dirty looks while he's trying to console the mother of the friend that just died. It shows that he's kind of henpecked. He kind of won't allow himself to be fully have fun with his friends until he's shit based. For as long and arbitrary as a lot of the shots are in this movie, there are a lot of quick cuts that are very effective. A lot of very funny cuts of uh, Cassavetes fumbling around with cigarettes, fucking around, dropping his cigarettes. We have all three of these guys just glancing, giving each other hard looks that are that say as much as the dialogue says. I love the existential ambiguity of the whole thing. These guys don't know themselves, and by the end of the movie, they don't know themselves any better. They are kind of man-children, and they do uh, get out of town as friends, but this isn't like a Todd Phillips movie. They're, they don't find themselves just by virtue of getting away from their wives, the old ball and chain. They have this rejuvenated kind of energy, this nervous energy with the tragedy of their friend dying, and they don't know what to do with it. Lastly, I think Cassavetes just gets a lot of things right that are specific to his experience and specific to his life. And if you share those same experiences, they reflect on the screen and they shine right back at you. The bar scene towards the beginning of the movie, uh, if you haven't experienced that, if you've never been 17 and a half yinglings deep uh, in a bar and start a singing contest, that's, that's probably a very annoying scene. But when you've been there, you really relate to the way the Gazera character, he's so into this singing contest and then just immediately like, shut the fuck up, you're annoying, stop. I've been in that headspace, I've been in that headspace countless times where you're that drunk and you're just having fun and then in an instant you don't want to be around anybody, everything's annoying, you hate people. And he captures that. That's such a specific feeling, and he captures that. And I just saw this movie for the first time last year, but I'm finding that Cassavetti's movies really lend themselves to rewatches and really lend themselves to growing older with them and watching them as you grow older and get more experiences. Certain things just come more into focus, and he is such a master at uh, you know grabbing these very specific feelings and relaying them on screen. Life is messy, and there are no answers. So there's only misunderstandings, and every once in a while there's a flourish of love that uh, is very fleeting. He shows this in different ways in his movies, the one night stands and faces, the unwavering foundational through thick and thin love of a woman under the influence, the long-term male friendship bro love in husbands. The best marriages have flaws. The best friendships can get altered by a tragedy. And you know, a one night stand or you know, a little fling can ruin aspects of your life. Cassavetes was just so ambiguous and so ambitious. I read in a book that he put his house up like three times to fund his own films. And uh, just the way he captures emotion, the way he, he, that's the engine that makes his vehicle go is emotion and heart. And uh, that'll make me, you know, forgive a 20 minute vomiting scene. And I think it should for you too. Thank you as always for watching me. Uh, hit all the social media below and leave a comment. Let me know what you think. And as always, stay hydrated. I know I will.